All right, welcome back. So we'll start with this one where Patty places money into an account earning 15% interest every two years. What is her annual effective interest rate? So we'll start by writing down what we know. We know that Patty has an interest rate that isn't yearly. It's taking place every two years and it's 15%. So I'll start by writing her interest rate as J because it's not a yearly rate. So I'm gonna use J rather than I and that's going to be equal to 0.15 because that is the same as 15% but in decimal format. And this rate is a two year rate, right? It's not an annual rate, it's a two year rate takes place every two years. And we wanna know what her annual effective interest rate is. And so if we're gonna use our formula where we have one plus J to the M number of periods per year minus one equal to the annual effective interest rate, we need to know what our M value is. And so in this case, it's a little bit different because before M had always been a whole number because we were looking at rates that happened more than one time per year. But this rate takes place less than one time a year. It takes place every two years. And so in this case, our M is going to be equal to one half because only half of this period is taking place in one year. Now don't get confused by that and think that you can just take this interest rate and divide it by two and turn it into a one year rate. It doesn't work like that. So don't ever try that, it's not going to work. We have to use this formula to find the annual effective interest rate from a rate that doesn't take place every year. So now let's plug in what we know into this formula and then we can solve for our annual effective interest rate. So we'll have one plus 0.15 to the one half power minus one, and that's gonna be equal to our annual effective interest rate. We can simplify this a little bit and we'll have 1.15 to the one half power minus one equals i. And then if we were to take the square root, which is what this one half power means of 1.15 and subtract one, we will find that the interest rate or the annual effective rate is equal to 0 0.0724 or 7.24%. And so that would be the equivalent annual effective interest rate for Patty's two year 15% interest rate. So for our next example, we have Larry deposits money into an account with an annual effective interest rate of 5%. What are the equivalent semi-annual, quarterly, and monthly compound interest rates? So this is a little bit reverse of what we've been doing so far. Before, we were given a rate that wasn't an annual rate and told to find the annual rate. But in this case, we are given the annual rate and we wanna find rates that are not annual, such as semi-annual, quarterly, and monthly. So it's still going to use the same formula, we're just gonna be solving for a different variable, right? Because our formula, one plus j to the number of periods m per year, minus one equal to i, we were always solving for our annual effective interest rate. But if we have this, but not j, we can actually solve for j instead, as long as we know our number of periods per year. In this case, we do, because we're given how often each of these interest rates are being compounded. So let's start with our semi-annual rate. And so the first thing we wanna know is what is our M equal to? Well, in this case, semi-annual means that we are compounding our interest two times every year, so our M is going to be equal to two. And so then if we plug this into our formula, we will have one plus J to the second power, because M equals two, minus one, and that's going to equal our annual effective rate of 5%. So in fact, I forgot to write that. Let's go ahead and write that real quick. We know that our I is equal to 0 0.05, which is 5%, but in decimal form. And so then our formula down here, we can write that in, that our equation is equal to 0 0.05. So then before we go ahead and solve, I just wanna quickly add a little subscript here to our J, because we're gonna be looking at several rates here, right? Semi-annual, quarterly, and monthly. So we're gonna have several interest rates flying around. So I wanna be a little organized and label them with little subscripts so I know which period or which M value we are looking at here. So in this case, we have J sub two. So now we can solve this equation. We'll have one plus J sub two squared is equal to 1.05. And then if we took the square root of both sides and then I subtracted this one, we would find that J2 is equal to 0 0.0247. And so that would be the semi-annual interest rate equivalent to our annual effective interest rate of 5%. So now let's look at our quarterly rate. In this case, our M is going to equal four 
because a quarterly rate takes place four times per year. And so then we can use our formula here. We will have one plus j sub four. I'm gonna use a four this time since our number of periods is four. And this is gonna to be to the fourth power. And this time I'm just gonna completely skip this minus one and this 0 0.05 step. I'm just gonna go right to saying that this is equal to 1.05. Because every time this is going to be the same calculation, the only thing that's changing is our value of m in our formula, right? This is a semi-annual rate, so m was equal to two. And then we're solving for our rate j. In this case, our m is equal to four because it's a quarterly rate. And we're still solving for our rate j, but now m is equal to four. So it's the same thing every time, the same calculation, just a different value of m. So I can skip this step here and hopefully it makes sense to just go right to here. And then if we were to solve this in the same way we solved the last one, except of course taking the fourth root of both sides, we would find that j sub four is equal to 0 0.0123. And so that would be our equivalent quarterly compound interest rate to our effective interest rate of 5%. So then finally, let's look at our monthly compound interest rate. In this case, our number of periods m is going to be equal to 12 because there's 12 months in a year. So this interest rate will take place 12 times every year. So then once again, we can use our formula and we'll have that one plus j sub 12, that's the number of periods this time, so that's how I'm going to label it, to the 12th power, because m equals 12, is going to be equal to that 1.05. And then if we solve this the same way we solve the others, except of course we're taking a 12th root, or taking both sides to the 1 12th power, we will find that j sub 12 is equal to 0 0.0041. And that would be the answer for our monthly compound interest rate that is equivalent to our annual effective rate of 5%. Now notice with each of these answers, it wasn't as simple as just, well, this one takes place twice a year, so it's gonna be half of the one year rate. No, it's not half of the rate. It's gonna be a little bit less than that. And so you have to use this formula. Same thing for the quarterly rate. We can't just divide our yearly rate by four to get this, it's different. So just keep that in mind as you solve for these rates. You gotta use the formula. Next we have Gina deposits $100 into an account for 25 months and it accumulates to $120.54. What is the annual effective rate? So this one's a little bit different too because now we're given the money that we started with, we're given the money that it accumulates to, and a time period. We're not told what her original interest rate is though in this case. And we're not told the period of that rate either. Although we can assume that it's going to be a monthly rate because our time period is given in months. So we can use that to our advantage and maybe find one rate and then convert it to another. So that's what we're going to do here. So first let's write down what we have. We know that she had an initial deposit of C equal to 100 and then it accumulated to $100 $120.54 over 25 months, so that would be her future value. So we'd write future value equals 120 and 54 cents. And then we know that the amount of time or the time period is going to be equal to 25 months. And so remember, when we use that formula, that future value equals the initial deposit times one plus the interest rate to the number of periods, we were typically using years, but really all that matters is that the number of periods is the same as how often the interest rate is being compounded. So if we're looking for a monthly rate, then our number of periods should be in months. So since we have our n is equal to 25 months, we are going to be solving for an interest rate that is a monthly compound interest rate, not an annual rate. So when we write this, we'll write the future value is equal to our initial deposit C times one plus J to the number of N years. Now, you really don't need to use J, but I like to use J for rates that aren't yearly rates, so I don't get myself confused. So now let's plug in what we know. We know that the future value is 120, and 54 cents, and that's equal to $100 times one plus the interest rate we want to find to the amount of periods, which in this case is 25 months. So now we can solve for J. We can start by dividing both sides by 100, and we'll get that we have 1.2054, and that will be equal to one plus J to the 25th power. And then if we took the 25th root of each side, which means we're going to take each side, so 1.20, 
to the 1 25th power, and we'll do the same to the other side, which leaves us with just 1 plus j. So now we can solve for j, and I'm going to skip the rest of these steps here, but you would plug this in your calculator, and then subtract 1 from both sides, and then we would find that j is going to be equal to 0 0.0075. Not exactly, but I am rounding it to that value. So now that we have our monthly rate, we can use that to find our annual effective rate, which is what the problem asks us for. So now we pull out our conversion formula. So we will have one plus J to the number of periods M minus one is equal to the annual effective interest rate. So if we plug in what we know, we know that we have one plus 0 0.0075 to the 12th power because the number of periods is 12. There are 12 months in a year. And then we subtract one to get our annual effective interest Rate. So we'll have 1.0075 to the 12th power and then minus 1, and that's going to be equal to i. And then if we solve that, again, plugging everything into the calculator, we will get that the interest rate is equal to 0 0.0938 or 9.38%. And so that would be our annual effective interest rate for this scenario. Gina deposited $100, it accumulated to $120 in 25 months, and so then we used that to find our monthly rate and then converted it to an annual effective rate that would be equivalent to that monthly rate, which is exactly what we were asked to find. All right, and for our final example, we have that Devin deposits $3,000 in an account and one year later has $3,150. What was his annual effective interest rate? And so there's actually two ways we could go about doing this problem. The first way is maybe the most obvious or the way that most people would do it because of the formula that we are already familiar with, right? We have the future value is equal to the initial deposit times one plus the interest rate to the number of periods. But in this case, we see that it's just one year later. So this would just be an exponent of one. So we don't need to write that. And so what we would do here is we would just be solving for our interest rate, right? We want to know what is his annual effective interest rate. And so since we were told what he has at the beginning and what he has one year later, we can just plug those values into this equation and solve for i. So our future value would be 3,150, and that would be equal to that initial deposit, 3,000, times one plus i. And so if we wanted to solve for i and we divided both sides by 3,000, we would have 1.05 is equal to one plus i, and then you could subtract one from both sides and find that i is equal to 0 0.05 or 5%. Right, and that would be honestly the quickest way to do this problem, but I do want to show you another way that involves a formula that we learned at the end of our lesson. And so while this is correct, I do want to show you another way you could do this because it might come in handy in some more difficult problems. So our formula is that the annual effective interest rate is equal to the accumulation at time t minus the accumulation at time t minus one, or one year before, divided by the accumulation at that time minus one. And so in this case, if you look at our problem, we would see that 3000 would be our time equals zero amount, and this 3150 would be our time equals one amount. And so if we looked at an interval of t minus one to t, this would be the same as zero to one, because if our t is equal to one, then t minus one or one minus one is zero. And so these two intervals match up. And so we can use these values for this equation. And so if we plugged those values in, we would have 3,150 minus 3,000, right? We have our time at t, which we said would be one, and our time at t minus one, or at time equals zero, which is 3,000. And then we'll divide by 3,000. And then this would be equal to 150 divided by 3,000 which if you plug in your calculator is going to give you 0 0.05 or 5%. So in either scenario, right, we found the same thing here that we found up here, you're going to get the correct answer. It's just about how do you like to do it? This one on the bottom doesn't seem to be as easy as this method up here. I mean, we did this in about 10 seconds, but then I had to kind of explain how this equation works to find it the second method. But it's good to see a different way to solve this problem because you might have to use it in other scenarios as well. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But that's all I had for the examples in this video. Hopefully you found these to be helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get to those. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. So I I will see you next time.